Who doesn't love paying taxes in Canada? In this video, I'm gonna go over five tax saving tips for Canadians so you can get the best bang for your buck. And yes, we need to pay taxes, but we can arrange our affairs in the best manner possible and pay the least amount possible. So let's get right into them. What's up guys? For those who do not know me, my name is Philip Setter. I'm the founder and CEO of Affinity Life, which is an online life insurance platform here in Canada where you can view quotes 100% online and apply 100% online as well. So if that sounds interesting to you, I'll put the link in the description below. Okay, the, everything that I'm going to talk about today in this video is for employees in Canada. So I think that makes up the vast majority of people in Canada. If you're a business owner in Canada, there is a whole bunch of other tax saving tips that I have for you. And maybe I'll make another video for you guys about that. If you guys are interested in about tax saving for business owners, drop a comment below and say you would like to see that video and I will make it. However, these are tips for just regular salaried employees of Canada. And there's not quite as many as there are in a business. However, there are still some available. So let's get into them. Number one, an RRSP. Now let's talk about it. Okay. So I went out for lunch the other day uh, with my good friend and we're sitting there and he's talking about his finances and we're talking about some things and he's talking about, you know, how can I save more on tax? And I said, well, well you could put it into your RRSP. Like that's a super good way to save on taxes. And he was like, yeah, but I don't really like RRSPs. Like the investments are really low. Like you don't get a really good return on it. And plus your money's trapped in there. You can't have it until you're like 65 or 70 and you know you pay taxes and then you pay taxes again so that doesn't really make sense i don't want to do that and i was like whoa i was like wait a second do you understand how an rrsp works and i don't think he did and i think a lot of canadians don't fully understand what an rsp works and i think here's the problem is because an rrsp was just a regulated or registered pardon me account that the government created and then they put forward and what happened was they have all these guidelines and legislations in place and then companies took this vehicle which you can invest anything into and then they did their own marketing okay so they're basically like resellers of other product or an other type of strategy and here's the thing they might advertise it in a way that makes you think like an rsp is a product it's not a product it's a registered account and you can have any investment and it could be with any bank any credit union any investment account any one of them can have different types of investments within this registered vehicle so here's the thing it's not a savings account this this is an investment account. You are meant to get really good returns in this account. And if you're not getting good returns, you need to switch institutions and find a better investment manager that can get you good rates like six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10% returns. If you're not getting that, switch managers, find someone else. So I've made other videos on how an RSP works. And if you're interested in them, drop a comment below. However, here's essentially in a nutshell how it works. If you're a relatively high income earner and you're paying a lot of taxes, maybe you're doing 60, 70, 80, 90,000, 100,000, 120,000 plus a year, you're paying a lot of taxes. So one of the ways you can reduce your tax bill is by allocating and putting money into an RSP. And once you put money into the RSP, you get a corresponding tax deduction right off the bat. So if you made 120 grand and you put 10 grand into an RSP, you're getting $10,000 off your income. You're only getting taxed at $110,000. So when you put it in, you're getting the deduction right off the bat. And then you're getting all this tax deferred growth until you want to take it out. And here's the thing. You can wait until you're 65 to take it out, but you could take it out next year. You could take it out the year after. You could take it out in five years and you're not going to be any further behind unless you're making more money. If you're making 150,000, you take that your taxes are going to be higher. But if you're still making 110, 120 and you take it right back out, you're not any further ahead or behind. So it's not like it's locked into this account and you get massive tax deferred growth because everything in this account is tax deferred, meaning that you don't pay any taxes on your returns. So if you're making, let's say 8% per year and you're taxed at 0% within this account, that means every year you make an 8%, 8%, 8%, 8%. Whereas if you had this in a non-registered account, you would make 8% minus 30% taxes, 8% minus 40% taxes. And you can see how that would start to erode your compound interest over time. So an RSP is a fantastic vehicle. Don't let your neighbor, your friend, your colleague, or anyone else tell you otherwise. It is a very good tax saving vehicle. Number two, you can deduct employment expenses against your personal income. So here's the thing. If you're required to pay for a bunch 
bunch of expenses such as maybe a home office, maybe supplies, maybe vehicle expenses, and they do not reimburse you for these expenses, you can actually deduct them against your personal income. Now, of course, there is a bunch of criteria that you know you need to follow and there's a bunch of eligibility. And I'll put the link in the description below. I'm sure Canada.ca has some guidelines for this. However, if you are incurring expenses on your own and your employer is not reimbursing you for those expenses, you can deduct them against your income and you absolutely should. If you have a home office, if you're driving around to different sites for your employer, if you have supplies that you have to buy, you should 100% be writing them off and you can check the link in the description. I'll put something there so you can see if you qualify for this benefit. Number three, you can borrow money and then use it as an investment and write off the interest. Now, I will put a giant asterisk up on the screen somewhere. Pish. Be very careful with this strategy. There are multiple different ways you can do it. One of the most simple ways you can do it is something known as a Smith maneuver, where you essentially take your home and you get a line of credit against your house. Now, once you get that line of credit, you're going to be paying, of course, an interest rate on that loan. Maybe that's prime plus one, maybe that's prime plus two. Right now in Canada, we have very high interest rates, so I'd not 100% recommend this strategy right now, but it's something good to consider. So what you're trying to do is you're trying to have some type of attrition between what what you're paying in interest and what you're making from an investment. So maybe you're paying 6% interest on this HELOC now, and then maybe you're making 8% on your investment, meaning you're making a net 2%. That's pretty good. But here's where the additional added tax strategy comes into place. The interest that you pay on this loan, because it's for the purposes of an investment producing asset, you can write off this interest against your personal income. So if we took, let's say, a $100,000 line of credit against our, our house, so it's a HELOC, a home equity line of credit, that's 6% per year, you're paying, pardon me, $6,000 per year in interest. Let's say you make 8,000 off your investment, so you're 2,000 above, plus there's some tax that we need to pay on that return. However, now we have $6,000 of interest that we paid, which we can actually use as a deduction against our personal income. So if you're in that high income earner, earner pardon me, category, where you're at, you know, 70, 80, $90,000, your marginal tax rate is starting to get to, you know, 30, 32, 33, 34%. This may be a good strategy for you if you can get that spread, that positive spread where you're making more and you need to work with a very competent investment advisor and you need to discuss the strategy because, you know, while it can be good if you make 8%, if you make 2%, then you're actually losing way more than that because you're paying 6% to borrow this money and invest into it. So there's a lot of things that can go right with this strategy, but there's a lot of things that can go wrong. Uh, however, if you are comfortable with leverage and risk, this could be a good strategy for you to not only get that spread, but then also get the deduction against your personal income with the interest that you paid. Number four, buy a home tax free. So one of the things that Canadians have access to is something known as the first time home buyer's plan. So if you're looking at buying your first home, one of the ways that you can achieve this on a tax-free basis, let's say you made $100,000 in a given year and you've been saving some money and you say, okay, I want to buy this house now. Well, one of the ways that you can do this and save a ton of taxes is you can use this first-time home buyer's plan and that's within your RSP. So this is how it works. You can use up to $35,000 as a down payment towards a house or a build, okay? And that's coming from your RSP. And then once you use that and allocate it towards the down payment, you have 50 15 years to repay it, which is a ton of time. However, if you're in the market to buy a house, let's say this year, you can immediately take advantage of those tax savings. So same example, $100,000. Let's say you put nothing into your RSP. Let's say you have the eligible RSP contribution room. You can then put, let's say, up to $35,000 into your RSP, reducing your income from $100,000 all the way down to $65,000. You're going to get a massive tax return that year. Then you use the first time home buyer's plan, which by the way, it needs to be in the RSP for 90 days. So keep that in mind. So plan ahead when you're doing this, then you can take that money out, put it towards your down payment. There's no taxable event that happens through this home buyer's plan, first time home buyer's plan. And then you can buy your house and you have now 15 years to slowly repay this back into the RSP. This is a fantastic strategy for the market to buy a house. And by the way, you can actually double up on this. If you have a spouse that is coming in with you to buy the house, they can put 35, you can put 35. That gives you up to $70,000 as a down payment towards your first home here in Canada. And number five, the final tax tip here for you in Canada, you can claim 
claim eligible medical expenses. And there's quite a few different ones. So prescriptions, medical devices, medical premiums paid to an insurance company. All of these can be eligible expenses. And I'll put a link in the description and you can actually check the Canada.ca website for the full description of everything that's eligible. So here's how it works. Essentially, you as an individual, you're going to take 3% of your income or $2,421. And the lesser of that is going to be your base amount. Okay, so let's use an example. And let's say that you're making $50,000 a year. So 3% of $50,000 is $1,500. Since that's less than $2,421, that's going to be your base. So anything above that base in eligible medical expenses, you can actually use to write against your income. So if you had, let's say $2,000 of medical expenses and they were eligible, that means that 2000 minus that $1,500, you would get $500 that you could essentially use to offset your income from your job and get a larger tax return. So if you have medical expenses that you're paying for every year, then this would be a really good idea to revisit them, see how much they are, see what your limit is. Again, it's 3% of your annual income or $2,421, whichever one is smaller and use those expenses to write off your income and get those taxes back. Now, if you also have dependents and you also have a spouse, then you can add all those together. And this really allows you to get even more write-offs against your personal income. If you're paying for eligible medical expenses for your children, you can again use that as well. And I won't get into how the math works with that. But if you do just go to the website, I'll put the link in the description and you can check out the eligible medical expenses and how it works right from the Canada.ca website. But you should absolutely be using this deduction against your personal income if you're paying for medical expenses. With all that being said, those are five tax saving tips here in Canada. Again, if you wanted to see a video about tax saving tips for business owners, I would love to make that video because I'm super interested in that type of content. If you guys are enjoying this content, all I ask is that you give it a thumbs up and I'll see you guys in the next video.